to the moderator for this evening, and then he'll introduce our panel. Um, Ken Levine has, uh, strange enough, been my writing partner for almost 40 years, and uh, this is the week he has the hair. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I, why tell you my credits when I can tell you his? Um, he's a writer, producer, and uh, creative consultant on such shows as MASH and Cheers, uh, Frasier, Simpsons, um, Wings, Becker, a lot of, lot of things, some of our own stuff, but you know, something's got to fail. Um, and uh, he's also directed about f over 50 episodes of television on shows like uh, Everybody Loves Raymond and Wings and Frasier, uh, Dharma and Greg. Uh, and uh, just because he couldn't stand me for a few years, he went off and became an actual baseball announcer. And he was the voice of the Baltimore Orioles and the Seattle Mariners and the uh, San Diego Padres. And for a few years, he was the host of Dodger Talk. So he is the only Jewish comedy writer who's a big hero in East L.A. Um, <laughs> Ken Levine. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I would like to introduce our panel. It is a distinguished panel, certainly. Uh, we have Mr. Paul Witt. <laughs> Anywhere you like. Uh, his partner, Tony Thomas. One of the finest directors in television. You saw his credit there for a second, Mr. Jay Sandrich. <laughs> and a writer from Witt Thomas Harris, who went on to create a show called Arrested Development, Mitch Hurwitz. And we have an actress tonight. Oh, wow. uh, the comic national treasure, Miss Betty White. This is great. I, I feel like I get to interview Mount Rushmore. <laughs> I'm Teddy. I'm Teddy. <laughs> uh, first of all, there is one person who is unfortunately not here tonight. She's under the weather, and that is writer Susan Harris. And before we start, I would like to have Paul read a letter that Susan wrote for all of you. So this is from my wife. As some of you may have noticed, I'm not here. <laughs> and I very much wanted to be. Instead, I'm stuck at home with an upper respiratory infection, which in my case is not shorthand for cold. I'm on two antibiotics, steroids, a cough medicine so strong that if I wasn't so sick, I might actually be enjoying it. <laughs> and if I had managed to stagger up here tonight, I wouldn't be talking or making much sense, or less than usual. One person who is thrilled that I made the wise decision to spare you the soundtrack of a consumptive tonight is Tony Thomas. <laughs> He's probably wanting to change his seat right now to get as far away from Paul as he possibly can. <laughs> And you might think twice about shaking Paul's hand if the urge strikes. <laughs> in any event, the truth is you're all much more interested in Betty, my personal hero, and you'll want to hear from Mitch, who would love to answer your questions about Arrested Development. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Anyway, when I'm better, I would love to come to some classes for a Q&A. And now that I've made this clear in front of Dean Daly, you know there's no way in hell it's not going to happen. <laughs> Have a wonderful evening. Some of the biggest laughs of the night from someone who's not even here. <laughs> well, first of all, let's go down the row and have each of you introduce yourselves and talk a little bit about how you got started. And in the case of Mitch, who's at my immediate left, um, your affiliation with, uh, with Thomas Harris. Uh, I, I was under the impression this was just about me, so I'm a little, <laughs> you're catching me off guard. Uh, so I really have to think back here. <laughs> These are the guys that did Golden Girls. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Betty White down there. <laughs> yeah, I love that show. <laughs> so uh, I, um, I, I got into the Witt Thomas family late, but um, it was, you know, uh, as I look back on it now, I mean, even as I experienced it at the time, uh, these were, are my mentors. And I really, uh, it, was, it was such enormous fortune. I had gotten the job there as a runner out of college and was r confused immediately when I found out the job was getting coffee for these guys. And I called <laughs> the, uh, and it really wasn't. I mean, it was more than that. But I, I, for some reason, I just thought, well, I'm going to do something important, you know, there. And, and I immediately found out, like, no, this is a whole, this is how you get in. This is you, you and I know a lot of you people are, you know, going through this yourselves. You want to get around it, and you want to hopefully be fortunate enough to find really talented people to mentor you. And I met Paul Witt and Tony Thomas and Susan Harris, and they had their production company, and that's who we're celebrating tonight. Uh, and they, they had already had enormous success. The Golden Girls had already been on the air and had won Emmys, and, and Soap had been, you know, hugely um, meaningful to me. I mean, actually, it's, it's Arrested Development. You know, e I think everything in Arrested Development is really from these guys. And they had a very, very unusual business. It doesn't exist today. Um, they, they had their own company. They were their own bosses. Um, they, had a, they made big studio deals so they could afford to make these shows. Um, but they were really mavericks. And they really they fought for writers. And they were writers, except they, they never took the credit. I mean, I, as I've gotten older and as I've done this more and more, I realize that they really are what we think of as showrunners now. Mm -hmm. um, they, you know, they, um, Paul and Tony had been partners for a long time, and Paul and Susan are married, or were then. I don't know how long you've been married. But, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and the three of them, um, I will only say this because I'm in front of a college crowd, but I, they're like the tripartite soul of Plato. Who studied Plato? <laughs> Any Plato fans? <laughs> Which, and you directed some Plato. Yeah, yeah you, <laughs> you did. Um, Actually, Sophocles, <laughs> you, I was You did some Sophocles. Much closer Great. to him. Uh, <laughs> but they, really, they were a perfect team. I mean, they, they really, they're hilarious. All three of them are just hilarious. And all three of them kind of shunned the limelight. So they were able to create this business that really supported writers and supported shows without putting themselves in the middle of it. Now we're in this period where everyone knows that even the term showrunner, you know, at the, at the time, as you know, wasn't nobody was talking that way. Right. Um, but they, they, you know, there's a lot I can say about them, and I will continue to say. But the, the short version of my involvement is is that I became a runner through them. And then very quickly, um, they almost took me on as a protege. It was just a great, I don't think they, n neither of us called it that, but they just let me attend their meetings and, and kind of learn the business. And then eventually I, I got into development. And one of my early tasks was reading, I remember Kim Roth, um, Paul's assistant and part of the family here, gave me a stack of all these scripts and said, hey, why don't you write some coverage of these things? And because I was an aspiring writer myself, I hated them all. <laughs> and, uh, and I explained in great detail what I hated about each one of them. <laughs> and, and then I remember Kim calling me and saying, like, you might want to revise this. These are all people that work here and that you're, you know. So, but, so I w it was a kind of a confusing time for me because I really wanted to write, but I, but I, I knew it was a, just a precious opportunity to learn from these guys. And then the other thing that was really um, notable about them is that they, they took care of their own. They, they really promoted people from within. And my friend Jim Vallely is, is here tonight, too, and he's my... my <laughs> uh, 
very, very close friend, and we, we went through the training together here. And w again, we didn't think of it as training, but it was the greatest training you know, that I'll ever have. So, but I'll, I'll talk about them more later as we okay. move <laughs> uh, Jay Sandridge has been one of the finest directors for really the length of situation comedies on television. Oh. And... Uh, <laughs> I'm old, but <laughs> not that <bad> story. <laughs> when did you start? Uh, probably the 1902. 1902, well. That's old. Okay, I mean, so that's it's two years old. after sitcoms <laughs> began. <laughs> well, at, well, the truth is, and this is even hard for me to believe, I was in the Army. Uh, that's hard to believe, but anyhow, I get out of the Army and I write a letter to the 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 uh, the man who hired for Desi Lou, and the first show I get put on, I'm a 21, 22 year old kid, is I Love Lucy, and I was the assistant director on I Love Lucy. So that is pretty right. much the that does go back. length of history, <laughs> <laughs> I would say. But here, here I'm this young guy who doesn't understand what I'm doing or know anything about being the first assistant director. And America's sweethearts are fighting, and I'm right in the middle, and they eventually were no longer America's sweethearts. But I'm not to blame, but it was a very <laughs> <laughs> But then I'll tell you what happened. After, after that, I Desi get, never went out with you? Pardon me? Desi never went out with you? Uh, he probably tried to go uh -huh. out with me. But <laughs> I, I, I get very lucky, and I, I, I get the job on the Mary Tyler Moore Show. And we do that for seven years, and then the time it ends. And I had done a pilot for with Thomas Harris, and uh, so Mary Tyler Moore's ending, and I get this pilot. Now, probably all of you have not seen so, but it's probably one of the greatest comedies I, I think that's ever been done. <laughs> and and I and I read this, and I think. Oh boy, this could be a disaster. It could be, if it's not cast right and done right, this is an embarrassing show. And I'm also offered at the same time uh, another pilot with a, a, a young actress who I didn't think much of called Betty White. <laughs> 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 and I, to be to be honest, I don't know whatever happened to her. <laughs> but but I had to make the decision because the time was coming up, and as much as I adored this lady, well, the, they didn't have a script, and the writers weren't staying with the show, and I took a gamble and went with soap and. It, it was just an, an amazing experience. I, I was just saying earlier, um, Jay Johnson, those of you who ever saw the show, he, he was the ventriloquist who had the dummy, and Billy Crystal, two men who won Tony Awards off-Broadway for one-man shows that they wrote and brilliantly wrote. Both of them were really good writers. We never had lived because the writing was so good. We'd get a script. And it was never, how can we make this work, or how can we approve this? It was just, boy, this is really great. Well, and it was, and it was all Susan Harris. It was all yeah. well, I mean, of course, Paul and Tony. I but uh, absolutely. <laughs> no, no, no. But I mean, I mean it was, what was unusual about it in an era. Is this my turn no, or yours? Yeah, I'd like to. <laughs> This is the first I even found out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, did, we never really worked together because I, I had done the pilot to Golden Girls and then I left to go back to New York to do Cosby. So I didn't know this guy. Yeah. Uh, but w what I was going to say was, was uh, two things about soap. Um, basically, it was the most fun group to work with. Uh, which is unusual in comedy because usually the director is here and the writers are behind him shaking their head and saying, no, that's not how we intended it. But it, it was a wonderful cast. It was cast well. And and they're just great. And I thought Susan wrote every word for the first two years, but I think Tony said just for the first year. But I've never heard, and today you look at the list of writers, they're 10, 12, 14 writers on a show. 
these guys did it all, and it was amazing. When I did the, and I've done a few pilots, but I have never, ever gotten a script that was in better shape than Golden Girls. And all we had to do with Golden Girls, basically, was shorten it, because it was a little long, and we threw out a scene, and I think it would be Arthur was teaching a class, I think, as I remember. Yeah, and there was also the houseboy that we got. Coco. Well, we had to cut out a character, be Coco. yeah, because Coco. the the mother was not supposed to be a running character, and she was just so wonderful. What was his name? Coco. Coco. Yeah. Coco. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Notice how Coco doesn't get any applause. Yeah. Yeah. Can right you imagine this wonderful guy? And he was a terrific <laughs> guy. He was wonderful. And getting a phone call, listen, the show is sold, and everybody loved you, and it's wonderful, but you're out of the show. I could have. <laughs> Anyhow, so that, my experience, we, the other quick, quick story is Bob Guillaume, uh, uh, we, we were casting and shooting uh, the pilot to soap, uh, I think, on a Friday. We did not have a Benson. We had seen a lot of people. And men, women, all different types of people and nationalities couldn't find anybody. And and I think Paul had been back in New York and shot some people. And I had seen Bob Robert Guillaume do a Broadway show where he sang, and that was it. But we just had the feeling he could do it. So we brought him out, and what you just saw, that scene, uh, we did it two nights before the show. No rehearsal, and he was carrying his script, and he was that funny. And the network didn't trust him, wasn't sure he'd work. But as soon as he got out in front of her audience and started working with that brilliant, brilliant Catherine Hellman. So it, it's casting, I tell you. That's my story. Yeah, yeah. By the way, Susan Harris wrote all or part of all 93 episodes of Soap, 93 episodes. Tony Thomas, you come from a show business family, don't you? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, uh, show business is my life. Now, show business, uh, yeah, I came from a show business family. My father was Danny Thomas, and I spent... <laughs> It actually was one of his bits. Yeah, right, that's for sure. <laughs> he blessed the crowd. Uh, and uh, I used to spend a lot of time on the set. We were, I was a, raised a Catholic, so we got a lot of Catholic holidays, and I spent a lot of time on, on, his, on the set because of those vacation days. Was the assistant director? I believe it was you, yeah, sir. Was, and I the Very little small little world. Little yeah. And uh, it, was do I just, uh, it was in my blood from that moment on. That actually, and the fact uh, I used to spend, uh, they used to pull me out of school all the time when he was away at the Sands Hotel or at Harrah's in Tahoe without any homework. You imagine when I came back and I didn't know times four because <laughs> I'd missed the whole period. <laughs> but uh, I mean, it was amazing that they pulled me out so many times. But what I got from that, even through 10, 11, 12 years old, was my father, I watched his show over and over and over again. And then we'd go to dinner, breakfast at two in the morning, and he would dissect the show and move the pieces around and tell us how he wanted to maneuver the audience and where it was good and where it was wasn't where it wasn't good and and that really taught me a great deal about first of all the joy of making people laugh and and how to construct it so that people pay attention he used to say to me I don't care how much I laugh I want to know when I stop talking there's no one breathing in the room you know I don't want to hear a thing and if I don't hear a thing I know I own them and, it, and actually that was Susan's writing we could, l we could have scenes that we would laugh and laugh, and then there would be these, these minutes go by where she wrote, and you start to cry, and, uh, and then the big laughter would hit after that, and it was very, very reminiscent to me of how my father constructed uh, his material. So what else do you want to know? Well, he became a producer, as did you. Yes, he did. <laughs> he did. Actually, he became a producer with Sheldon Leonard, and uh, we, uh, I watched that relationship, and truly, because of that relationship, when Paul and I got together, I knew what our relationship was going to be, because I saw those two guys become brothers and, and really uh, love each other and get along and, and care for each other. And uh, 
and all of that stuff. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, and we uh, and so it, it was all all of that is why I got into the business. And uh, you know, we hired this guy for the first show, and every pilot we did after that, practically he did and got us started and stuck around for a couple, and and. Uh, went on his merry way to, to do other shows. I just have one quick story. Uh, and th this sounds untrue, but it's a true story. I, at the end of my time at Soap, I get offered a, a Neil Simon movie. And I get the script at the end of the day, and I'm going to a football game with a friend. So I go over to his house, because I'm picking him up, and I have like 20 minutes. And I said, I got to go read start this Neil Simon script. So I read it for 20 minutes, and I come out, and he says, well, what's the script like? I said, and I said this. He writes as good as Susan. <laughs> and I really meant that. And that's a true story. But uh, anyway, it was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. Wow. I'm going to cut that out. <laughs> that, you'll never see this that. whole the thing. Flow this, sorry. Yeah. Actually, interesting enough, when I say cut that out, I learned a great deal about comedy and editing. Uh, when uh, we would look at drafts, read drafts, I already knew what wasn't going to work because I spent so much time in the editing room that that uh, you could read the script and say, okay, this scene, if we shoot it, we're going to cut it. So it really taught me a great deal of post-production about the construction of a st complete story. Um, so it was interesting. I, 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 I can attest to that. I, I spent a lot of time with Tony when I was starting out in, in editing, and I think editing is like the hallmark of, of my work now too, and Jimmy does it with me. I mean, it's yeah. uh, it's he's a percussionist. A lot of people that go into comedy or that go into cutting or that you know just understand how jokes work play the drums. It's an interesting yeah. thing, yeah. and he, it's all rhythm. You can watch that today, now, twenty years later, whatever it is, <laughs> and it, it still works. Yeah. Well, and then you get lucky enough to have this young woman in your shows. And <laughs> I mean, we did. Uh, S Susan wrote some great scripts, and we had a great staff, a great uh, first couple of years staff, and then, then you were on the show, right? I don't yeah, even remember. I, 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 I sort of co-created it, is what I tell people. <laughs> <laughs> but because I came on in season six. That's right. <laughs> You changed the whole thing. Got me and Susan, or yeah. sometimes I'll just say Susan. I'm going to just me, but it's no. Yeah, but it, you know, I'm watching this material, and it's really interesting. First of all, you watch that soap material, and I know it probably doesn't mean a whole lot to you guys because of what you've seen on the air, both in commercial television and on cable. But the things we were talking about there, uh, we fought tooth and nail every minute with the network to be able to say the kind of things that were set up there in soap. It was just, it was really tough. I mean, you look at the stuff today, and I feel like a guy with no teeth in my mouth going, well, we couldn't say that. We couldn't do it. <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing what, the, what can be said now that we had to fight for. We fought over the word boff. We couldn't find a euphemism for the fact that Corinne and uh, Jessica were sleeping with their, their same tennis teacher. And for, for a week, we all fooled with words to figure it out, and finally we settled on boff, and they were boffing, and so and, and that was the word we finally got them to agree upon. So, um, those of you who boff, did you, did, you <laughs> did you try screwing? We tried all of those things. Yeah. <laughs> did you try you can balling? Say that. You can say that now. <laughs> did you guys try? <laughs> 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 anyway, and then I'm watching this scene of from the pilot with Jay, and the amount of freebies that these ladies gave us, it just the looks, the takes, the things, it's just amazing, just amazing. It's, a, it's, a, it's just a dream to have a great script and then watch 